Hello everyone, Rurikan here coming at you with another first impressions video and today we're going to be taking a look at Tiny Brains. Now Tiny Brains is a game in development by an independent studio called Spearhead Games and this is their very first title. I do believe that this game launched first on PlayStation 4 and that is the v uh, version of it that we're going to be taking a look at but it will it will also be available later on in Steam and maybe even other platforms. Not 100% sure on that. But um, yeah, so what is Tiny uh, Tiny Brains all about? I was about to say Tiny Story because it's got Tiny on it. Um, tiny Brains is a puzzler and it is best played with friends. Uh, and let me tell you, it is most definitely best played with friends because when you're solo, it's not as much of a compelling experience as you would expect, but uh, this, this game actually reminds me a little bit of another indie title that I, um, that I did not recently, but I did not too long ago, which was forced. Uh, I actually was able to get uh, an additional three people to play through that game and, you know, actually get the full four-player co-op thing going. However, this time around, uh, it is only me. And to be honest, I even only have one control for my PlayStation 4. So uh, it is possible to use your PlayStation Vita as a controller as well. So in case you happen to have a PlayStation Vita lying around, you might be able to do this game in two-player um, two mode. And uh, like I said, this is a puzzle game, and it is best played cooperatively. Because here's the thing, there are several heroes that you can use, uh, and I say heroes loosely, because basically these characters are the victims of uh, the experiments of a Russian scientist. Of course it had to be a Russian scientist. What other nationality could it possibly be? <laughs> So anyways, you're going to be in control of a group of uh, little animals. Each of them has a special power. So you can switch freely between them if you're playing in single player. I'm not exactly sure how it would work if you're playing in multiplayer. But anyways, uh, as you can see, you can switch by simply pressing the uh, L1 or R1 buttons. That is going to switch through all the available heroes. Now you'll notice that uh, if I use a power, so let's say I use this guy's power and I switch to another hero, time slows down. That is because when you're in single player, you will need this time slow down to make sure that you can use all the hero's powers in the best way possible. So let's talk about each individual hero's powers, shall we? So this is the Green Bunny. I I'm not exactly sure of the names of each of them, but this is the Green Bunny, and the Green Bunny has the power of pulling things towards him, as you can see there. I can pull this cube. There's a cooldown in between power usage, so you can't just spam it, so... This is the bunny's power. Then we have this uh, character over here. I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to be. Some kind of blue raccoon. Uh, he uses this block over here. And he just drops the block. And you can then interact with the block using powers from another character. Which is, um, for instance, the power of this pink bat. He can push stuff around. So if you do a combination of powers, you can basically put the block down and then push it away. Now, that's not the only thing that the blue character does, though. He puts the block down, and then he also explodes that block. And when that block gets exploded, your character gets a little bit of a boost and jump. So that allows him to jump a little bit higher. I've already told you about the power of the pink flying rat, which was uh, basically telekinesis pusher, pushes stuff. And then we have this one, which, as you can see, it even has like some kind of transparent lid on top of his skull. And he basically has teleportation, so you switch um, places with the object that you select and you're targeting. You can you basically target using your right stick and you use R2 to fire skills. You can also use square to fire skills. There is some kind of a soft lock if you so desire. But for more precision you can use uh, the right analog stick as well as R2. So we're back to the bunny, so as it, like I said, bunny pull stuff, this guy drops stuff down, it drops the, the ice thing and then it can explode to jump up. This guy pushes stuff and this guy teleports. And with these powers you have to navigate these multiple puzzles. Now as you can see here, if I press this, that is going to open that door. And if I press this, that is going to lower that button. Now obviously we want to hit that button, so we're going to lower the door. And the next thing I'm going to do is I actually want to have the block here. Now I'm going to go here. Now we need to hit that button. So something that you can do in order to hit the button is you drop this and then you push it. And now you proceed onwards to the next Come puzzle. On, guys. I thought we were you and me having much fun together. Why'd you leave me for pink chicken? 
And when he says pink chick... Very pink. Guys, I tell you, she's heartbreaker. This is the Russian scientist trying to basically regain control of his experiment because we've uh, escaped. When I say we, I'm talking about the Tiny Brains characters, so these characters that we're controlling. We've escaped from the clutch of that evil scientist, and when he says pink chick, he actually means a pink chick, as in... Um, how should I explain this? A chicken's offspring. You know, a small little chick. Um, there is a pink chick that kind of helps you and releases you early on in the game. There's no reasoning as to why the pink chick is doing this. There's also no reasoning as to why this scientist wants to create these mutant animals. So let's just roll with it for now and continue onwards to the next puzzle. And there's the pink chick that I was talking about. Okay, so as we can see, this pulls the platform up and we need to basically hit that block over there with the um, red block that's actually behind the prison cell over there. So most likely what we gotta do is we gotta get a pillar. Oops. So much for that. I assume that they're gonna give me another one. Yep. So let's see, I can do this. And then from here, I'm not going to be able to get to the other side. So I'll have to try and make a little bit of a jump. Nope, not going to be able to get that far away. So basically we have to figure out whatever the hell I'm supposed to be doing for this puzzle. Nope, this is no good. Hmm. Wait, I can get another puzzle here. Of course. This lowers that jail cell, so we want to do what now? Well, the ideal thing would be to pick up, to basically pick up that um, power cube that we have there. In order to do that, I do believe we'll have to use this guy. Nope, because that is going to break it down. Hmm. Doesn't look like we can actually pull something across here, so the only thing we can actually use to go across to any... Oh, wait. Switch this here. Ah, I know what I gotta do. It seems that the, um... Oops. It seems that the range on the on the mouse's tele, with a teleport skill seems to be the only thing that actually that doesn't actually have a range to it, so to speak. So, if we get this cube over here, and now we just need to come up with a way to actually climb up here. Thank you. So that means we can now. Oh, we actually can't wait. We need to put the block here still to get a little bit more height. Oh, there we go. And now we need to get this block out of here. Teleport ourselves here, but we need another block here. It's crazy stuff. Basically, I need to get myself to the other side. I need to get another block on that side. A block that I am not using. So we probably need to teleport the power thing again. Yes, there. And now, let me see if I can do my math right. The problem is, we always end up on the wrong side of things. Oh, we just need to have that thing there temporarily anyways. Or should I just get something on top there? Totally lost here, guys. Just, uh, you guys gotta give me a minute.
Oh, no. Oh, it's fine. Okay. Oh, damn it. Well, but at least I know what I got to do. That was actually pretty simple. You just have to drop the block there while you're upstairs. And switch this. Oh, what the hell? Why is that thing there now? No, don't do that. God damn it. Now I have three blocks on this side. How the hell am I supposed to get to the other side? This is no good. Oh, what? Oh, you're actually able to push blocks to the other side? That's bullshit. I tried doing it, didn't work. Now all of a sudden it does. Anyways. Uh, we need to get this thing to get off, then put this thing here. I broke the switch! There we go. And now I broke the damn thing. There. Let's just do it like this. Now move this way. Put this thing down. A little bit. Get off. Oh, what the hell? There's blocks on. Oh. We're not gonna get this puzzle done. There we go. Oh my god. Get off! Just get off! Go! There. Finally did it. But yeah, this is the premise of most of the game. You basically go through each of the scenarios and you solve the puzzles in each and every one of them. Uh, some scenarios have some hidden uh, stuff around, like I saw some cheese earlier, which uh, suits the game fine because these are all some, fort, some, some form of rodent. Uh, what the hell? Okay, we are looking at another power cube that we can see there. We need to put that power cube into this power slot to fix things. What does this do? This brings up a platform, so there's a high chance that we're gonna get ourselves killed. And why is that platform so slow moving? I do not like the fact that it moves so slow. This is clearly a bad omen. And how am I going to project myself onto that platform? Obviously, we're going to have to use this dude. So, let's try this, shall we? Okay, so it's going to be two tabs on either direction. Come on, take your time already. Go down, platform. Evil platform of doom. But the thing is, there's a green thing there. And we will have to activate probably using the block from up there to shoot that switch, which is going to give us access to the item downstairs. That, that's what I'm assuming at least, because there's no, no way to actually predict what the hell is even going to happen. But put that down. Nope, no dice. I'm pretty sure that this is what we got to do. If, if you put like just two players in here, this would become so much easier. Once again, reinforcing the idea that this game is meant to be played with, uh, with more players as opposed to just by yourself. There we go. And now we're going to be needing another one of these things. Touch that dial. Now let's... Aww, really? Well, at least it shows up there. And what happens to me, I guess I die? No. Let's switch places with that. I place this thing here. Boom! Another room solved. So now let's talk a little bit um, about graphics, sounds, and the like. Um, I like the art style, except for one thing. One thing that really spoils the game for me, I'm not sure if they change this further on in the game, but for now it is really bothering me, and I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but there is a static texture on top of the graphics of the game, which I find Hello. to be really annoying. Can you hear me? Stop this madness and return to me at once. I don't return to you, I do what I want. I'm gonna push these, this furniture 
out of here. Is there actually a reasoning for me to do this? I'm not even sure, I just like pushing stuff off of cliffs. There. Is this your furniture? Take it! Take your furniture, you crazy evil scientist of Whoa! What the hell is that supposed to be? Actually, I think I can break that. There. Take that. How does that make you feel? You evil bastard. Oh, the pink chick. No, he's gonna hurt the pink chick. Don't do it. Oh, great. The ball levels. So, there are a couple of... Excuse me. There are a couple of levels where you have to basically guide a ball. Um, and honestly, I don't know what the hell... How the hell am I supposed to get this ball to the other side? Can I climb on top of these things? Oh. Ooh. Oof. There we go. Okay, I get how this is going to work out. So, I think the best character to use in this situation is the rabbit. Uh-huh. How am I going to... I would say teleport seems like a fair deal. Nose! We lost the ball. style <laughs> can we push it I don't think we can push it like manually we have to use powers to interact with it so that was a terrible idea how did I even get it there the first place oh yeah I remember this guy so this guy seems to be the most responsible of the lot when it comes to this part so ouch there we go. Should be pretty much easy now. And now let's just switch places with it. Open up the door. Ooh. Oh, that seems like a really good idea. You stay the hell away from me. I'm warning you. Pop. Oh, I, I want that cheese. I need that cheese. What the hell? There we go. Actually, you don't really need the cheese. The cheese is the collectible stuff that I told you guys about. When they ran out of explosives, they started eating each other. They became fat. Fat chicken with yummy barbecue sauce. I'm gonna bring this hammer with me. Oh, uh, what? Give me the hammer. I'm bringing it with me. Nose! My hammer! Okay, so this chick you gotta keep alive. What is this to? Ooh, barbecue. There you go. So basically, you have to fend off the other chickens. Well, let's actually. Put you there. Set you on fire. Get rid of you guys. Oops, I actually damaged the chick by mistake. Nose! Oops, set these ablaze. Quick! Nose! I'm not fast enough. Did I kill it? Oh, she died. So, I don't get it. Did I lose? Did I win? One never knows. But as I was telling, I, I would really like it if you guys were able to see. I mean, I, there's no way for me to zoom or kind of explain it, but there's this texture on top of the graphics that is just, it ticks me off a little bit. I wish I could move the scenery a little bit because you can totally, yeah. You can totally see. I'm not sure if you guys can see it on YouTube, but if you fully like play this at 1080p, you should be able to see that there's some kind of a static texture on top of the graphics, which, which it's kind of giving it like a denim look for whatever reason, but I don't like it at all. I would rather that texture not be there. Now, in terms of animations, I actually like the animations. They're decent enough. They do a good job. Um, in terms of sounds, they work just fine. The music works just fine as well. Oh, we can actually... Please refrain from using the phone. Hold 
I didn't actually call 911. I don't know why it did that. Speed dial. Mr. Gauss, hashtag 7. Santa, hashtag 4. I want to call Santa. So, hashtag 4. So evil. Well, let's go for hashtag seven. Welcome to Mr. Gauss. You lonely scientist. Yeah, you have a, an obsession. You have a G-string theory. Quantum computing gets you a little bit excited. Tell Mr. Gauss all your fantasies for only four ninety nine a minute. Come on, give us a call. You know you wanna. Now that's kind of creepy. Let's move on to the next scenery, shall we? What do we have here? I guess we gotta push the thingamajig. No. Oh wait, you can actually jump on top of it and then push it? Oh, that's kinda cool. Okay, I got an idea. So, let's see. You can put this down. Jump on top of it, switch to this guy, push it, switch to this guy, blow it up. And these are the kinds of things that you have to do in order to solve puzzles, no, obviously. Oops. Yeah, you should go for a shower. As I was saying, as you can tell, He's actually singing. Aw, <laughs> oh, come on. But anyways, as I was saying, this is obviously a lot more fun if you have more players, which I wish I knew of more people that had this game that would like to do a collab review or something. Aw, oh, come on. How the hell am I supposed to... Oh, wait, I know. I need to get there, and from there I need to teleport the cube there to finish the problem, so let's try and get that thing. So like this. Mira, Mira. Who is smartest Oops. The smartest? Me? What the hell is he talking about, crazy scientist bastard? Now then, let's try this again. Whoa! Yoink! What a beast. But yeah, definitely if you're like in if you have people to actually play this with you and you got the controllers this seems like a solid uh, title if you are interested in what you've seen so far more than likely you will greatly enjoy the game um, it is kind of awkward sometimes because you need to get used to the whole uh, different sets of powers that each of them has but with a little pr with a little bit of practice I think pretty much anyone can can do it what the hell why can I not teleport that thing can I pull it? Yes. In which case, I can pull it here too. Yoink. Now, there are other modes that you can actually play through, which I will show you guys now. Uh, I can only show you one of them, though, because apparently there is a soccer mode, but this is multiplayer only. Uh, and I don't... And this is all, seems to be only local multiplayer, because, like, you can actually play Tiny Story... Uh, in um, in public matches, which I'm not even sure how that would work, because if you got no communication going with other people, that can just get completely crazy, which can be good. Although I'm not sure how many people are playing the title right now, so I can't guarantee that another player is going to pop up. Who knows? And I got dipped into the bubbly crap. But yeah, you can play this with um, with your friends or online with complete strangers, although it's more than likely going to be a lot more fun with just your friends. Then, like I said, there are another, uh, a couple of other modes. We got Tiny Challenges. Uh, I'm going to go with Offline. Oops. Cha Oop. Urgh, stop it. Offline Challenge Selection. So there are the Ball Challenges, and there's also Combat Challenges and Puzzle Challenges. 
as well as apparently a couple of more um, different levels that you got to unlock. Now, obviously, ball challenges are going to involve uh, running around with the ball and uh, doing the whole thing that you guys saw me do earlier with uh, the ball. I think I've shown you one of the ball levels. Press the button to start the challenge. And basically, the whole challenge consists of you keeping the ball going, I take it. Let's start with a push, then. Ooh. Get the ball as far as you can. Let's use this guy, because this guy is really reliable. There we go. Don't you fall down. Oh, I killed myself. No! Respawn! Respawn! Before the ball falls down. And let's push it. Ooh, this is insane. Stop. Oh, crap. Oh, that's it. That's it. It's over. <laughs> that's actually really cool. I, I like this. I like this challenge mode. This challenge mode is actually pretty funny. Do they have more? Let's try a ball challenge one, just out of curiosity. See another map of this. Uh, apparently, there's also an, another mob. Which you guys could see there is typed as classified, so I'm not exactly sure what that's about. Let's get the ball into this tube. Character with, that we're using can just push, so that's kind of what I'm going for here. Oh, what the hell? Don't fall, damn it. I didn't even notice that it could fall there. Anyways, these are some of the challenges. Like I said, there are ball challenges. There's other types of challenges that you can get. I don't know why it took me all the way back here. But there's also a combat challenge, which consists of you keeping the chick, the pink chick that we saw earlier, alive for as long as you possibly can. So that basically consists of you pushing people around. Like, if you push them to the red blocks, those I've seen that they disappear. You can also push them away. You can also use this thing to get rid of chicks. You can also use the teleport to get that guy over there. And that thing is going to leave, so goodbye. Uh, how are we going to do these? Okay, I got an idea. Let's just put this thing here. And... Place another one. Place another one, and there. Get rid of those. Uh, push these guys away, but that's not going to really do much for us. Thank you. Oh, that's not what I wanted. There, get rid of as many people as possible. Oh, we got bombs. I got an idea. Let's get this bomb over here. No, 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 no. The bomb, the bomb, the bomb. Okay, never mind. But yeah, I think you guys kind of get the idea. Obviously, this mode also going to be a lot more fun if you do it in co-op. I mean, the concept of this game is basically more for co-op than anything else. So this is another mode that you haven't challenged. There was also a puzzle challenge mode that I saw there, which I'm curious because I haven't tried that one out yet. So let's see what this is about. It's probably kind of like playing through the game cooperatively, but... Oh no, this is about a uh, time trial. Okay, so I'm going to assume that what I have to do is this. Now, push it, switch back. What up, nose? How the hell are you even supposed to do this one? It seems ridiculously crazy. Well, let's just... What happens now? It respawns exactly where it was. Well, this is a puzzle challenge. And these are all the modes that are available for, for me right now, but it turns out that there's a couple of more that I didn't get to play with, because Tiny Trolls, you need to complete the Tiny Story in order to unlock this, as well as another one called Jules Mode, so I'm not exactly sure what these two modes are about, but they will also be available to you once you actually finish the story. 
Now, if you guys enjoyed the footage that I've shown here, more than likely you will enjoy this title. It is currently available for the PlayStation 4. It will soon be available on Steam. So check it out for yourselves. As per usual, leave me your comments, feedback, all that kinds of good stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.